Good morning. Welcome to my office and welcome to Saturday. I hope that it started well for you and I hope that the promise of today and the promise of tomorrow, Sunday, our weekend, holds bright and glorious things for you. We've been talking about contentment. And I just was thinking this morning that um, you know, this is a really serious issue. It's a very elusive issue. Most of us have difficulty cornering commitment, uh, contentment and um, really incorporating it in our lives, making it who we are, becoming content people. That can be a hard thing to do. And I just thought maybe it was time to put away Carl the cow and, um, and just get real for a few minutes because there's some things I want to make sure that you know before we stop talking about this issue. Con contentment is a hugely important thing. And when it does elude you, you, you know it right away. It leaves a sense of chaos in your life that sometimes can border on panic, particularly when you feel like you're out of control. And, and the sad truth is that most of us are out of control far more than we realize. We, we want to take control of our lives. We want to be in charge. But there's just too many things that are not within our ability to control for us to say that we really are in control. As I drove here this morning from my home, there were numerous opportunities for things to go bad. Cars that I met on the highway, a jogger, a police car, a guy on a bike. Things could have taken some bad twists at any time, and I didn't always have control over that. All I could do was my best. And, and it occurs to me as, as we wind up this talk about contentment, that there, there's really only two options. Number one is we can, well, three options. Number one is we can try to be content in the things that we have, in our possessions, in our belongings, in which case eventually we fail. And sometimes we fail quite spectacularly, painfully. Number two, we can decide that there just is no contentment to be had. And we can resign ourselves to a life of fear and anxiety. And there's nothing we can do about it. And we become increasingly more desperate. And when we're desperate, we tend to do dumb things. Or number three, we can come to the truth and we can realize <clears throat> that life is not an accident, that this creation didn't just happen. There are people who would like you to think it just happened, but it didn't. Anybody with a brain and anybody with an open mind can look around and realize that all of the things in our world today were designed I'm sorry, they just were. That's not what our conversation's about. But once you understand that there is a designer, that there is a creator, and you realize that he is the God of the Bible, then you understand that he has been seeking you since the day of your conception, that he loved you before your conception, and that he wants you to come to him. And if you will, he will walk you through this life and eventually into the next life where he will meet you and you can live with him in heaven forever with the whole church family, the body of believers that have trusted in Christ. That's in a nutshell what I believe is true and what the Bible teaches. There's a lot more to it than that. But contentment, real contentment, lasting contentment, only is possible when you make peace with God. I want you to understand something about the things that you're anxious about and, and, and confused about and panicked over. You can give those to anybody you want to and hope that they can fix it. You can give it to a doctor, and sometimes doctors can help. You can give, give it to a medication, and there are times when medications are helpful, as we talked about yesterday. You can give your problems, your fears, over to anybody any false love, any false relationship. But it can't do any better than you do yourself because it's only human at best. You have to release it 
to God. Because you see, it's all about who and how you release those worries, fears, and anxieties. And if you do it correctly, then you will find contentment. I've been laughing with you all week long about this missing tooth here. And, and I've had a cap there on that tooth. I had a silver one for years, uh, but I had a cap on that tooth all of my life, almost, almost as long as I can remember. But it all started back when I was just a little kid and I was playing in, in uh, playing baseball with my, with my friends, doing what kids do. And I wasn't watching and somebody let go of a baseball they threw to me and it hit me right there. And it wrecked that tooth, it broke it off. My parents took me to the dentist, they put a cap on it and it's been that way the rest of my life. You see, that ball went where it was supposed to go. It went where he threw it. The problem wasn't that it didn't go where he threw it. The problem was how he released it. He released the ball at the wrong time from his hand, and that put it on a trajectory right toward my head. And it went exactly where it was, not, maybe not intended to go, but where it was thrown. And that's what your anxieties and fears will do. They will go where you put them. And if you choose to put them in the wrong place, then you'll reap the reward of whatever you chose. The Bible makes it clear that what you sow, you will reap. Well, if you release your anxieties and cares in the wrong place, then you will not get your desired results. The only way to get contentment, true lifelong contentment, is by releasing your cares to Jesus Christ, by giving them to your God, your Lord, your Creator. And see, He is your Lord and Creator, whether you want to proclaim Him that or not. What I, what I believe doesn't change truth. I can believe that Carl really is a living cow, but, but he'll never be anything but a fake donkey. And I can believe there is no God, but if there is one, and I'm convinced there is, then my thinking that there isn't won't change the fact. I'm convinced there is because of what the Word says and because of the way that it was written over thousands of years by, th by, by scores of different men. And over those years, prophecies were made at the beginning that came true a thousand years later. There was no mistakes in it. There's other reasons. But the bottom line is I'm convinced that the Word of God is the Word of God, the Bible. And through that, I learn how to release my cares, who to release them to. I have one more scripture that I want to share with you on this subject, but it cuts right to the heart of it. First Peter chapter 5 says, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxieties on Jesus because he cares for you. He loves you. He's willing to walk with you through all of this mess. If you're like me, you get frustrated listening to all of the different opinions and thoughts about social distancing and quarantining. And, and friends, I can't figure it out. I can't understand it. And I gave up. I'm not sure that the best minds out there are getting it right. I just don't know. All I know is that the Bible tells me to obey those in authority over me, so that's what I'm doing. But greater than obeying them, more important than obeying them, is obeying the God who made me. And he speaks to me through his word and says that if I will cast all of my anxieties on him, he'll take them because he cares for me. If you're sitting in your home or your place of work today, or maybe even in your car or in a park and you're listening to this and you're eaten up with concern and fears and anxieties, let me just tell you the truth, please. There's nothing in this for me. I'm not looking for your money. I'm not looking for your attention or your approval. I'm not looking for anything from you. I just want you to know the truth. And the truth is that the Bible says that if you'll cast your anxieties on Jesus, he cares for you. He'll take them. And as we said yesterday, 
His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He won't just stake us out and tie us down to things even worse than what we're dealing with now. No, he loves you. He'll pull with you. He'll bring you through this. And through the midst of it, you'll sleep the sleep of the innocent because you'll be forgiven of your sins. I want to encourage you today to run to Jesus. Maybe you already know him as your Lord, but you're kind of lacking in this department of contentment right now. Maybe because of all that's going on, or maybe that's just one of the hallmarks of your life. You need to run to Jesus with that. Maybe you don't know him. Maybe you realize that you need to know him. Well, you can run to him right now and you can give him everything and he will become your Lord and you can trust him. Let me just be as real with you as I can, as honest with you as I can possibly be. Right now, you need to decide to take some time away from everybody else and sit down someplace and just simply say, God, can I talk to you? Would you stoop so low as to listen to me? I want to tell you that I need you, that I believe your word, that I believe that funny guy, that, that, that weird individual there that's been talking to me on these little videos. I, I believe him and I want to know you. I want to know Jesus. I want to be one of your kids. Would you help me with that? Friends, he'll come running to you. See, after you take the first step toward Jesus, he'll take the second step. And by the time you take the third step, you'll realize he took the first step all along. He took it at the cross where he gave his life for you. And after you deal with that, you need to say, right now, I want to cast all my anxieties upon you. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen, and I'd like you to just make a list. I'd like you to write down, number one, I'm worried about, and then write it down. Maybe you'll say, I'm worried about my job. Number two, I'm worried about my health. Number three, I'm worried about my family. Whatever it is, write it down. Your list may be that short, or it may be 20 or 50 or 100 things long. I don't know, but write it down. And as you write down each one, talk to him and say, now that you're my Lord, now that I've trusted you, I give you this care. I give you this fear and this anxiety on this issue. Would you take it? Would you give me your peace and contentment? Guys, he'll meet you there. He will. If you've got questions about that, please please let me know. Please leave a comment below or, or please text me, 618-593-9224. I care enough to put that on the internet. Don't hesitate. Text me, call me, I'm there for you. Email me, pastorronwoods at gmail.com. We'll talk about your decision. We'll talk about your prayer and we'll talk about next steps, the next things you can do to draw closer to God, to love him more, to experience him in your life. Boy, I hope you'll do that. Guys, I don't want anything in return for that. I don't have to have anything from you. I don't want anything from you. I just want to help you. So there it is. There's the bottom line. You want contentment? Cast all your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. Again, I love you. I'm praying for you. I pray you have a great weekend. And uh, join us tomorrow here for worship. Go to YouTube, type in Tower View. No space between Tower and View. Hit enter into the into the YouTube website search bar, and it'll take you to us tomorrow morning, 1015. We'll be worshiping together online, and I hope you can make that. Hey, I used up all my time. Let me just pray real fast. Father, bless my friends today. Lead them, guide them, meet them in the decisions that they make. Let them find joy and peace and rest in you today. And I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. See you tomorrow morning in church.